Hi, it's Angel Shaver, Stampin' Up! Independent Demonstrator from Kansas. I'm trying to fix my lighting. And today we are going to be working on card four out of the Hold On To Hope March Online class. So for those of you who are playing along, get out. You can... Well, it should be the only kit you have left, but it's the one with the white card base. I'm going to show you a few things before we get started. Today is the last day to RSVP for any of my classes at the El Dorado Train Depot this Saturday. So if you were interested, Please let me know. Today is the last day. I will be finishing up kits and will not do any um, more tomorrow. So, if you are interested in the simple stamping class, which is for all ages, and it's for either you just want to come and stamp and not deal with all the extra embellishments and tools or you've never done it you want to try it or you want to bring someone else who's does, hasn't done it or you want to bring a kid grandkid age 12 and under these are the cards we are going to be making they both feature celebration items. And so here's one with party pandas. And here is the other one with the heartfelt thing? Sentiments? I don't know. I, well, I don't remember what it's called. Um, but the thing about the simple stamping mm -hmm. class is that it's from 10 a.m. to noon, really however long it takes you to make your two cards. And it costs $5 per person. And you just come and get to do some stamping and leave with two gorgeous cards. And then tomorrow is, or this Saturday is also the day for the monthly card class and this month I am offering two different times one in the afternoon and then one in the evening and I will share with you the cards we are going to make we will be using the hold on to hope set for two of the cards and here's one of the cards i don't know if you can see very well we're gonna learn the emboss resist technique and there's this beautiful ribbon and here is card number two I um, can't, shouldn't show you all of that because it, it's going to be entered in one of the challenges this week. But that will give you a chance to play with different coloring options. I will have blender pens, markers, watercolor pencils, all available in case you, you can just play and see which one you want. And we will be making two of those. So you can use two different ones. Or if you know which one you love, you can just use it. And then, this just arrived in the mail for me today. This is one of the celebration items you can earn. But you can also order this kit. And we are going to be playing with this and you can play with the stampin blends that i have um stamping blends do become unorderable tomorrow at noon 
and will not until they're back in stock, which I will let you know what that is. Right now they're estimating May. So if you're interested in stamp blends, you might want to check them out and get an order made. All right, I'm going to flip you down and we are going to work on card four. This is an exciting month because there are five Tuesdays. So I will be back here live next Tuesday, but I will be teaching a technique. You do not have the products to play along, but you can see a new technique. All right, let me flip you down. I think that will probably work. Okay. First thing we're going to do is, so I'm going to put this over here for reference, and we are going to stamp, hold on to hope, on the front of the long white um, piece. Got what I was looking for for a second. I really ought to get the stamper out of this but I didn't, so. Oh, and that's not even the right stamp. Good thing I noticed that before I stamped. I do that a lot. Okay. This is the correct stamp. And I'm just going to make sure my paper is straight and line that up with the grid and stamp. Oh, I stamped upside down. That's wonderful. I'm just going to flip this over and we will try it again. I do that all the time. And I recommend that everyone look before they stamp, but I didn't. It wouldn't have mattered. I could choose to just um, put the saying at toward the bottom, but I wanted it towards the top. I'm gonna try again. And there we go. And then I am going to set this aside for now. Get out the tiny white piece of paper because it's time to stamp the butterflies. Now I haven't decided exactly what color I want to stamp those butterflies. I um, used three different colors of pink, I think, on the sample card. And I'm not sure which ones I love, but I think today I'm going to be using close up my hold on to help my fresh fig and put that away. I'm going to be using the Berry Burst and 
will try it stamped off. I think I like that. My neighbor dogs are barking like crazy. Okay. And we'll put up the berry burst. That is all the stamping we are doing today. It is time to get out the big shot. And I'm going to be getting out the magnetic base plate so that I can be sure that my magnet or that my thinlets or framelets will line up where they are supposed to. So put that down going to have to run this through um, a few times because I have three butterflies on one piece of paper and then we're doing two of the smallest parts with the champagne foil. Now if you don't have a big shot you can fussy cut the butterflies. And you should already have the crosses in your packet. I have already cut out one of my crosses, but I'm thinking about doing something a little different with the second one because you will see what exciting thing it does making sure that my multi-purpose adhesive is directly on the back of that Move this aside for now. And move it to the next butterfly. They told me a little trick that if you're having trouble getting your framelit to line up, flip over your cutting plate and then it should work. All right, looks like it worked. So we will send it through this way and then we'll line it up for the third butterfly. Move to smidgen. I'll have to do some trimming on that butterfly and we'll get it on the third butterfly.
send it through. framelit back in. And then I'm going to grab my scissors and trim up my butterfly. For those of you who are wondering what's on my wrist, I don't know if you can see it, but I had a fun mother-daughter day over the weekend, and one of the things we did was get henna tattoos. So this will be on my arm for the next few weeks, and then it will be gone. I always wondered what I would think of a heartbeat tattoo. And this one has the treble clef on one end and a couple of eighth notes on the other. It always kind of scares me. That makes me think I have a bug crawling on me. But I don't remember instantly what it was. But that's what this is. Okay, so now I'm getting out my cross. And I closed up that without putting my cross work. And you will see what I'm going to do with it here in a minute. I may or may not decide to use both pieces of it. But I'm going to start by putting my card front together. I'm going to put some glue on the back of my Fresh Fig floral bundle paper. I'm choosing to put, I think this side looks like wallpaper, and that's what I'm choosing to leave out. But really, you could pick whichever side you want. And then I'm going to glue my Hold On To Hope to my Fresh Fig cardstock. Just create a little frame around it. Then I will go ahead and put glue on the cardstock and glue it down in the center of the card front. Here is a champagne foil cross that I had cut out earlier, and I don't have both pieces of this one. I only have the inside, and that's what I've decided to put on the inside of this card. Now, you could use this card for Easter, or you could use this card for basically anyone who needs some kind of card to remind them to just hold on to hope. Getting back off of these is easier said than done. Hmm. 
<laughs> well, we'll save that for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and get my glue dots out so that I can get my butterflies attached. And I'm going to put each butterfly on a glue dot and then when I peel them off, they will already have glue dots on the back of them. And I'm just going to put them down. If you're playing along at home, I would love if you would um, send me a picture of what your gorgeous creation looks like. You are, because um, everyone makes cards a little bit differently, even if you're following exactly what I done here what you do not have to this is your card you can use the elements to change it up just a little bit okay there's my outline of my cross now I'm thinking about trying to put some mini dimensionals this cross is so skinny, I'm going to have to cut my mini dimensions. Okay. And putting this in the center of that outline to give it just tiny bit more dimension. If you hear that snoring, that's my dog. That is Clifford. Just snoring away, enjoying his afternoon nap. And there you have it. Just popped up a little bit. That's what I was hoping it would look like. Now, I am still going to see if there happens to be a layer of, you would think if this was already off, it would be um, sticky, but it didn't just easily fall off, but I wonder if you've done it for, if it's been on there for a while. Mm -hmm. Just, oh, there we go. It is just harder to peel off. So this is what I'm going to put on the inside of my card. And there we have it. There's the inside and there is the outside. I hope you had a great time making your card. I'm going to flip you up just so I can see if any questions show up. But um, if you're watching this later and you have questions, be sure and ask them. I should generally get a notification that there are comments or questions and I will be checking those. 
also don't forget to come back next week for bonus week five with the hold on to hope bundle and we will be learning a new technique so i will see you next week bye